Hello everyone, I'm here together with Mick, Nick Maybe from the A3G and also with Alexander Karius from the, the Adelphi uh, organization and my name is Arne Lietz, I'm a member of the European Parliament. Today we had a workshop to, on an initiative report in the European Parliament on climate diplomacy. I was hosting that together with Joe Line, the Envy Committee and the AFID Committee uh, working on this together. The idea is to bring uh, climate to the foreign policy arena in the European Parliament, but also to question and to see how the ES, the European Foreign uh, Service, can uh, elaborate on that topic. But further, you both have been speakers, you have been invited uh, to give keynote notes, so if you can elaborate on the institution, please, you're working for, but also the key points you brought into this discussion and how you feel that that is an important field uh, the European Parliament and the Effort Committee should uh, take up. So if I may ask you, Nick, to start. Okay, my name's Nick Maybe. I'm the CEO of E3G. We're a European organization. We work on a range of issues, but particularly on climate diplomacy, we work with uh, European member states, but also support um, diplomacy between Europe and other countries, particularly China, um, but also work with cities, businesses, NGOs to help them um, do uh, diplomacy on climate change. So we are both a think tank, but also practitioners in the field and have a, a long background in foreign affairs. So my main points in today's discussion was really that um, after Paris, which was a great European diplomatic achievement, um, Europe has got to step up and show leadership to show that Paris is going to work and really make Europeans safe. And at the core of that is diplomacy. It's important that Europe solves climate change at home and does its part, but unless it can work with other countries, we won't have the global action needed to keep Europeans safe. Um, but that takes um, focus and that takes capacity. Um, and while we have a lot of work going on with member states doing really interesting initiatives on renewables, on efficiency, on um, climate security, um, they're not aligned at the moment into a key strategy to really influence the big countries like China, India and South Africa to also step up and do more to save the climate. So my core messages were firstly, um, Europe needs to work more as a team and pool its resources um, across a wide range of areas because climate change is now not an environment ministry issue but a whole of government issue. And secondly, we need more diplomatic capacity and priority um, on climate diplomacy to get it on the agenda and to make sure we've got enough capacity to talk to other countries and listen to other countries of what they need. And for me, the European Parliament is critical for getting that raise in priority but also those resources needed to support a real European climate diplomacy strategy. Thank you very much, Nick. Uh, may I ask you also to give uh, your insight? Yeah, my name is Alexander Karius, director of Adelphi. It's a Berlin-based think tank and public policy consultancy on environment development and foreign policy. Um, I dealt with uh, the geopolitics of global environmental change for quite a while, and we are doing research and um, uh, public policy consultancy for a wide array of uh, national governments and international organizations. Uh, what brought me here to today's discussion um, is basically to um, illustrate to what extent climate change is a driver for conflicts all over the world and I think we have improved our understanding uh, throughout the last couple of years to get better insights about these uh, climate security and fragility compound risks uh, that we can observe all over the world from localized small-scale livelihood security problems uh, to transboundary uh, water problems that relate to water use and uh, energy development etc. And the question is do we have a system in place globally that can adequately respond to that to solve the crisis or to prevent from these crises to emerge? And it's interesting enough that the the uh, World Risk Report that was launched at um, uh, the uh, World Economic Forum in Davos a couple of weeks ago named four environment and climate related issues as the top security concerns. They do that already for a couple of years and my basic question is do we respond adequately to these challenges? Uh, my answer is no, we don't do that and I think that's key also with our view to what Europe is doing and what Europe can do is that we have to increase the capacities at the receiving end because 
even if we have understood how complex climate fragility risks are developing and the number is increasing, we don't have the institutions in place to adequately deal with that. If we look at the programs, even within uh, European foreign policy, there is only a fraction of spending on systematically addressing these questions. And I think this needs to be improved in the near future. Uh, this has to do with staffing. It has to do with uh, bringing that message across uh, the European dele delegations worldwide, because it's uh, the delegations that then also uh, have regular dialogues uh, with their counterparts in each of the countries. And it's not just spreading the message, but also establishing a system that allows us to receive information on how countries actually are dealing with that uh, on a technical level or really framing it into wider uh, political uh, um, perspectives. Thank you very much also for your insights. Thank you both gentlemen for being here also on behalf of Joe Lyne. Um, as you both said, uh, we have to raise the capacity in the foreign policy field. We are doing that and trying to do that as a European Parliament, as we have delegations going around the world. We can ask questions uh, like the NDCs, uh, the strategies, the long-term strategies of the countries, of whomever we are approaching and we are talking to, but also learning and seeing how the European Foreign Service can be enlarged, could be supported uh, throughout the next financial framework. So stay tuned on this development. Uh, you can look on my website www.arne-leads.de um, the report, uh, the progressive timeline, you can involve yourself and uh, also look into that. Um, the report is going to be done in summer and we hope that you engage yourself and bring this message out to the world. Thank you very much again and all the best coming and going back home. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.